Hello, this is Ben Zimmer from Enable Training and Consulting, and welcome to the next installment of the LV Mastery Tip Jar. In this installment, we're going to talk about state machines. We're going to use the FRC First Robotics Competition Framework as an example, and we're going to build a state machine around a theoretical lifting mechanism. We're going to see how to do this, we're going to see how to investigate, how to think about state machines, and finally, we're going to see how to implement them within the FRC framework. Before we begin this example, let's talk a little bit about what a state machine is. At its heart, a state machine is code which executes different functionality depending on an internal variable called a state. In this example, we're going to talk about a theoretical lifting mechanism, which is somewhat relevant from the FRC point of view. But the ideas we're going to learn here can be applied really to any code. So what we're going to build is a lifting mechanism which goes down until a limit switch is reached, has a short delay during which time a ball could be captured by the mechanism, then proceeds upwards until a limit switch is released, at which time it goes back down to the bottom state. We explain this in words, it's perhaps pretty easy to visualize, because it's a pretty simple example. But you can imagine how very complicated examples could be very difficult to explain in words. So there's something called a state diagram. Here's an example of a state diagram which represents the system I just described. Whenever we have a state diagram, we've got to start with a start case, something which is going to tell us where and how we enter this diagram when we first start up our code. So the start case, the first thing it does is it sets our motor speed to minus 0.5. Minus 0.5 just indicates that it's the downward direction in this particular hypothetical system. We then go to a state called moving down. If we just follow the states around, we see that we go from start to moving down, to wait for ball, to delay before raising, to moving up, and then following the arrows, back to moving down. So at its heart, we think of a state diagram as a series of states with arrows interconnecting them, telling us how we go from functionality to functionality. I've included more information in this particular state diagram, though. The actual arrows show that actions are happening. These are called transitions. So when we transition from the start state to the moving down state, we see that we're setting the motor speed equals to minus 0.5. So when we first enter the system, we immediately set the speed to minus 0.5, which is going to set the system to start moving down. And then we're in the moving down state. The way I've represented in this diagram what happens during the state is just the text to the right. So during the moving down state, we do a logic check. We say, if the lower limit switch equals true, go to the next state. Otherwise, do nothing. So most of the time, the code that's running this moving down state is doing nothing. But as soon as that lower limit switch is set to true, then we transition to the next state. We see that we set the motor speed equals to zero, which will stop the motor. And then we're in the wait for ball state. So again, in the wait for ball state, most of the time we do nothing. However, there is a logical check. We check the ball sensor. If the ball sensor is true, then we're going to go to the next state. So if that was true, then we transition to the delay before raising state. So there is an action here on that transition. When we go from waiting to delaying, we set a parameter. We set the delay end time equal to the current time plus one second. This indicates that an action that can be taken between states can either be a physical action, such as setting a motor speed, or can just be storing data or modifying an internal parameter. So, as you might imagine, in the delay before raising state, we're, again, most of the time doing nothing. But there's a check. We're checking if the current time is greater than or equal to the delay end time, then we're going to move on. So if we go from the delay to the moving up state, the action is to set the motor speed equal to positive 0.5, which will start the mechanical system moving up, and again put us into our moving up state, which, again, does nothing most of the time, but is always checking for the upper limit switch to be true. If the upper limit switch is true, then following the arrow, we go back to the moving down state. And we're setting the motor speed back to minus 0.5, which is going to set us in the negative motion again. So you see that this is a nice way to formally write down what happens in our state machine. It's a, it forces us to think about what each of the states are, and the fundamental point of state machines, the way you should probably think about them best, is that action occurs between states and 
Most of the time in a state, it's doing nothing except checking to see if it should go to the next state. Now that we've thought a little bit from the point of view of a state diagram about how this mechanical system might work, let's think now about how we're going to implement that in LabVIEW, and in particular how we're going to implement it within the point of view of the FRC framework. Well, first, let's think about what our inputs are. Well, clearly we've got three physical inputs. First is the lower limit switch. Next is the ball sensor. And third is the upper limit switch. So we've got three inputs. Next, let's think about what the outputs are. Well, really, we just have one output from this system, and that's the motor speed. Depending on whether we're stopping the motor, whether we're moving up or moving down, we're setting that motor speed depending on what state we're in. But that hasn't captured everything. For example, there's this delay end time, which doesn't really fall into either category. It's neither an input nor an output. So we think about that as an internal variable. You can th even think of it or call it a state variable. And there is one other internal state variable, and that's the actual state itself. So we have to know and keep track of what the delay end time is and keep track of what our current state is. So with that in mind, let's build a type def that's going to contain all of that important data. We've seen in previous tip jar videos how we can create and modify our type defs. Let's go to our begin VI, which is always a good place to start whenever we have to open up objects such as digital inputs and motor outputs. We'll go to our block diagram. Right down here where the standard framework opens two motors for the arcade drive, let's create the objects we need. So let's go to our WPI robotics library, IO, digital inputs. We have to actually open three inputs one for each of the two limit switches and one for the ball sensor. So let's just choose channels for each of those. Channel 2 and channel 3. Also we're going to need to open a single motor which we can do by going to the WPI Robotics Library, Robot Drive, Advanced, Motor Control, and just Open. This is a nice way to open just a single motor. You can choose whether it's a Jaguar or a Victor type motor controller, and we should choose which PWM channel we're using. We'll set it to PWM3, because 1 and 2 are being used above. Next we need to add each of these device references into our main type def. So let's start by opening the digital input VI, copying that device ref, closing, and then editing our main robot type def. In here we're going to place all of our data and all of our device references for the state machine that we're going to build. So we can just paste now that we've got that digital input wired up. We give that the name of upper limit switch. Duplicate that twice. Rename the duplicates to be lower limit switch and ball sensor. So we're not going to place these right in the root of robot data. We're actually going to make a separate type def specifically for this state machine. So in order to do that, let's go to our cluster palette, create an empty cluster, just throw these three device references inside. Remember the shortcut to clean things up. We right click on the very edge of the cluster, choose auto sizing, arrange vertically. And now, since we've created this, we can go ahead and turn it into a type def. So from the edit menu, we customize control, which opens up a new control, which we can then turn into a type def. And then we can save it and call it our lifter type def. And when we close and save it, it's going to automatically have linked this control to the type def. And give it the proper name. We'll call it the lifter type def. And while we're here, we can put it inside the robot data. But we still haven't finished the lifter type def. We've got to add a couple more things to it. So let's go back to our begin VI and open up our motor open VI. Again, copy the motor control device ref, close the VI, and then return to our robot data control. 